Born around 1899, the exact date is not known, Adam Rayner of Graz, Austria had parents who were neither tall nor short for the time, with his father measuring in at 5 feet 8 inches, that's 1.72 centimeters, and his mother at 5 feet 5 inches, that's 165 centimeters. He even had a brother who matched his father's height at 5 feet 8 inches. But this was not the case for Adam. Thanks to the fact that Adam attempted to join the army when he was 18 to participate in World War I, we know at that age Rayner had reached a height of just 4 feet 6.3 inches, that's 1.38 meters, and then at 19 he measured in at 4 feet 8.3 inches, 1.43 meters, when he tried to join up yet again. Both times he was considered too short and also too weak to be able to join the military. For the record, for someone being classified as a dwarf, it's usually considered that they have to be an adult of a height less than 4 feet and 10 inches, that's 1.47 meters. While he was short, according to the medical report, he actually had exceptionally large feet for his height, with his shoes measuring in at the European side of 43 at the age of 18, which is about a size 10 in US sizes. According to Rayner, by the time he hit 21, while still barely classified as a dwarf in height, his shoe size had gone up to a European size 43, which would be about a size 20 in the US. For reference, Shaquille O'Neal wears a size 22 to 23. Although his feet were continuing to grow at a remarkable pace, Rayner himself was staying at more or less the same height. That's when something even more bizarre than his clown feet happened. For a reason unknown at the time, Adam started growing again very rapidly. However, what must have initially seemed like a blessing to the short Rayner soon turned into a curse. From his 21st to his 32nd birthday, Rayner grew just under 4 feet and 10 inches to be 7 feet 2 inches tall. That's 1.47 meters to 2.18 meters. It should also be noted that his height would never have been greater than this, except by his 26th birthday he started developing a severe spinal curve which continued to progress as he grew. This and later difficulty in eating had the negative side effect of leaving Rayner bedridden for the majority of the latter half of his life. If that wasn't bad enough, he also went blind in his right eye and his vision diminished in his left. His hearing also started to go and he became deaf in his left ear. So what caused this extreme shift in height? After a medical exam was done by doctors F. Windholz and A. Mandel, they discovered a tumor on his pituitary glands which not only explained his rapid growth but also his partial blindness. As far as growth is concerned, this tumor resulted in a condition known as acromegaly, where the pituitary glands produces excessive amounts of a growth hormone during adulthood. His vision loss was due to the compression of his optic chiasm, which is where the right and left eye nerves cross near the pituitary glands. To try and fix the problem in 1930, doctors removed the tumor, but he still continued to grow, albeit at a much slower rate that seemed even slower than it was because of his spinal curvature continuing to increase. Over the next and final 19 years of his life, Rayner's spinal curve would continue to increase and he'd grow another 6 inches, dying at the age of 51 in 1950 at a height of about 7 feet and 8 inches tall, that's 2.34 meters, making him the only person to spend time officially being classified as both a dwarf and then a giant. And that was some bonus facts. If you happen to be wondering, the tallest living person is Sultan Kosen from Ankara in Turkey. Born in December of 1982, he stands at 8 foot 3 inches tall. Mr. Kosen also holds the world record for widest hand span. The tallest man in history was Robert Pershing Wadlow, who was 8 feet 11.1 inches, that's 2.72 meters tall, and weighed 485 pounds at the time of his death. By the age of 4 years old, he was already 5 foot 4 inches tall, that's 1.63 meters. At the age of 13, he became the tallest Boy Scout in history at 7 foot 4 inches, that's 2.24 meters. Wadlow had not stopped growing at the time of his death at the age of 22. He died in 1940 of an infection infection caused from blisters on his ankle that he didn't notice at first due to not being able to feel much of anything in his feet and lower legs. Like his living counterpart, Robert also holds another record. His feet were the largest in history at US size 37AA. This would be 18 and a half inches long. And now for another bonus fact. Speaking of heights, have you ever wondered why people today are so much taller than people in history? Well, wonder no more. In a nutshell, there is very strong evidence that this simply comes down to nutrition and the body's ability to fully benefit from said nutrition via not getting certain diseases that hinder the absorption of consumed nutrients. For example, during the Black Death from 1346 to 1353, 60% of the European population, about 50 million people, died quite suddenly, leaving the surviving 40% and their offspring with greater 
access to food and less crowded living conditions. Together, this contributed to fewer diseases and better nutrition, and as a result, people during the 15th and 16th centuries in Europe grew much taller than their forebears. In fact, in England, the average man was only 1.5 inches, that's 3.81 centimeters shorter during this time, compared with the average Englishman today at about 5 foot 9 or 175 centimeters. 17th century Europe, however, was a mess, with cold winters from the Little Ice Age limiting crop production, civil war in England, Louis XIV's expansionary aggression, and the Thirty Years' War. As a result, human health and height suffered, with the average Frenchman reaching only about 5 foot 4 inches, that's 162 centimeters. Not coincidentally, this is why French men popularized wearing high heels around this time, a practice that women would later adopt and men largely abandon, outside of high heels worn by cowboys, which are otherwise known as cowboy boots to make them seem just a bit more manly. Faring little better during the 18th and early parts of the 19th century, many Western Europeans lived in dirty, disease-ridden slums that prevented them from increasing significantly in height, with men across Europe in 1850 only reaching, on average, about 5 foot 5, that's 165 centimeters. Starkly marking the difference proper diet and living conditions can make it is that the 19th century English students at the Santos Military Academy, the upper class, were on average a whopping 8.7 inches, that's 22 centimeters taller, than their compatriots at the Marine Society, who were from the lower class. In the United States, things were quite different, with the average man in 1850 attaining a height of about 5 foot 7, that's 170 centimeters. In fact, on average, people in the U.S. remained taller than their European counterparts from the Revolutionary War through World War II, with a slight dip during the Second Industrial Revolution. It is thought that American height dominance during this period was due to having a relatively resource-rich environment, where, with the largely privately owned agriculture-based society, many had easier access to a wider variety of nutrition sources than was common in places like the UK, where a very small percentage of people owned much of the land being farmed and much higher population densities existed. Things began to change after World War II. In the last half century or so, the average American height has more or less remained the same, while post-war Europeans have, on the whole, sprouted like crazy. In the most extreme case, throughout the 19th century, men and women of the Netherlands averaged roughly 5 foot 5, that's 166 centimeters for men, and 5 foot 1, that's 156 centimeters for women, relatively short for their era and region of the world. Today, the tallest people in the world are found in the Netherlands, where the average man is just over 6 feet tall, that's 183 centimeters, and the average woman is nearly 5 foot 7, that's 170 centimeters. By comparison, American men are 5 foot 9, 175 centimeters on average, and women are 5 foot 4, that's 163 centimeters on average. Some believe that the great strides in height made by Western Europeans over Americans can be attributed to their universal health coverage and other social policies, such as maternity services and greater parental leave, allowing for better practicality of things like breastfeeding versus formula fed, and later, more time off work work, providing extra time for preparing nutritious meals rather than relying on fast food and other quick, high-calorie, low-nutrition junk foods. Further, the so-called over-nutrition prevalence in the U.S. combined with a lack of physical activity leading to widespread obesity has also been noted for its negative effects on growth hormones and metabolism, limiting the ultimate adult height somewhat. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you're looking for something else from me, why not check out well, a video from the archives of this channel or a new channel from me, Highlight History. I'm going to link to that below. And as always, thank you for watching.